Pizza. Eat that meat, Jennifer. Why doesn't that pizza look pleasant? Fasten your taste buds for gastronomic rhymes. Because us two fat ladies are itching up to get to do your kitchen. Yeah! Oh, yes. Bloody marches, poised between the two. We're headed for a lock on the Flangoslin Canal. I love canals, but they always look a bit too much like hard work. All those locks to navigate. Not when you've got lock keepers like Les Molyneux to give you a hand. We're cooking a celebration meal for his father. And we are. My, that must be a powerful bike to bring you two young ladies up there. I'm the first thing is persons. <laughs> Come on, meet my father. Hello. Hello, how do you do? Mr Molyneux, how do you do? How do you do? Does lock keeping run in your family, then? It does indeed. Yes, right. we've been doing it for a few years now. How long has your father been at it? I had 32 years on the waterways. Good heavens. <laughs> Good Lord. Just and now you've time. taken over? I've taken over. Great. Stepped in his old uh, shoes, like. Do you cook yourself, Mr. Molyneux? No, wife does that. <laughs> when, she's, when she's at home. Where is she? In Blackpool. She's gone on a spree. <laughs> oh, <laughs> get caught in the rain. Yes, it's getting the rain. We'd better go to the kitchen. <gasps> this way to the kitchen, round the back, help yourself. Right, well, we're going to cook you something smashing. Oh, very good. Right, see well, you later. See you later. <laughs> see you later. to make a dish that was invented for the slaves, I suppose, in the Deep South. It's called Hopping John. One has to be very ashamed about it. In fact, I think my family on my mother's side had something to do with it. They were Bristol merchants, you know, and they dealt in rum and slaves, I have a horrible feeling. Rum, sodomy and the lash. Would it have the Navy? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I've got this salt bacon, or salt pork, if you can get it. And I've just cut it up into little chunks. Like that. Then take it over to cook it. This is very hot, this auger. Mm. Beware. Now, I've got a little oil in the pan. Pop the bacon. Then... These need to fry a little bit, not too much, because we're going to do quite a lot of cooking with them. Oh, goodness, it doesn't matter how many times I do it. I just love that smell of frying bacon, don't you? It's wonderful, yeah. I think this was a great treat to have a bit of pork. I'm it sure is. they didn't give them much pork. Beastly so-called Christians treating people unbelievably badly. Now I'll add some onions. And the stir around. And some garlic. You want to cook these until they're softish but not too browned. Some fresh thyme. There we go. And a good pinch of cayenne. They're just browning. So I will add the beans. Now these I soak overnight. And then make quite sure that they boil fiercely for a good ten minutes and then simmer them for about an hour. There she blows. Then we add some skin de seeded tomatoes. Now we have the beginning of our Hoppin' John. Stir together, then we leave it for about twenty minutes. Well, I go over and deal with the rice, which I shall add, add subsequently. I'm going to make a dish called Burnett's Woodcock. In fact, I'm doing it with pigeon on this occasion because it's the wrong time of the year for woodcock. And I've just been putting these potatoes through a ricer. It's a very good way of making sure that the potatoes are properly mashed and you haven't got any lumps in them. And into it, I'm going to put some double cream, an egg yolk, and some capers which I've just chopped 
and mix this all in. You have to make sure that the potatoes dry off very well. Leave them to stand after you've strained them before you mash them. Let, don't touch them till all the steam has come off them. And now some stiffly whipped egg white. Really? Yes. It'll, if that'll be good, it'll make it rather like a souffle, won't it? Well, you know, it gives a bit of lift. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make some potato cakes with them. Ah. Um, and just fry them brown. And then when the pigeons are done, I'm going to stand the pigeons on top of the, the potato cakes. Charming. There's a fine little little pigeon. Aren't they nice? Did you know that's where squabbling comes from? From squab squabbling? Yeah, all the little young pigeons in the nest came... ...they each other, you see. And so they were t taken to squabble. I had some friends who had them, and there was a side lavatory by the side of the house where the dovecote was, and when you went to the lavatory, they'd all be sitting on the ledge outside the window, all making that terrible <laughs> noise, <laughs> did it? Drive you mad. Yes, I think it does. No peace at all. There we are. Put those out of the way. And I'll fry those up while the pigeons are cooking. And here I've got a tray of pigeons. Is there some way of telling if they're young or not? Feel the bones, make sure they're sort of a bit pliable, a bit mm. supple. And, and press down on the breastbone and you'll feel it give. Now smear them well with butter. The one thing you want to avoid is the pigeon drying out. It's fascinating, this whole thing of pigeon racing, isn't it? I mean, the Queen is a very keen pigeon I racer. Do. It's rather, always rather nice. You know, see her in her cloth cap out there, racing her pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> and a bit of butter within each cavity, just to keep them moist. My father, you know, used to have his pigeons flown from Cairo. Extraordinary. Particularly good pigeons from Cairo. Yes, they breed them specially for the table. There we are. And then, nice bit of streaky bacon over the top of them. Again, to make sure that they keep moist and lubricated. Yeah, I'll just tuck it down and these will go in a hot oven gas seven or thereabouts for 10 to 15 minutes as long as you like them but they must be pink don't overcook them. No they'll turn into leather won't they? And a great treat here these are actually pigeons livers. They were delicious. Well because they've been shot you see you get them with all the stuff inside them otherwise if you can't get pigeons livers and you very often can't then you can always use chicken livers. I'm just going to put them through a sieve. And all I've done with these livers is just saute them in a little bit of butter until they're barely cooked. And I'm going to use these to thicken my sauce. When your father's pigeons came from Cairo, mm -hmm. what did you do with them? Did well, you keep them somewhere? Well, they were dead. Oh, they were dead. I <laughs> thought they arrived, did they? Like the quails in um, that wonderful film, Babette. The Bet's Feast. Mm. Oh, wouldn't that have been good? No, yeah. no, they, they arrived all packaged and indeed frozen. Um, I suspect that he had them sort of sent on a plane that was supposed to be carrying medical supplies. Because <laughs> I don't know what the official attitude would be to importing pigeons from Cairo. <laughs> I once had to bring back the ashes of a dead friend from Bahrain. <laughs> because even though they were just ashes, because it was the remains, you had to buy... You had to pay an enormous sum of money to put them on an aeroplane. Quite ridiculous. So I wrapped them in a the petticoat and brought them home. <laughs> so now I'm going to put these pigeons in the oven and go over here and make my sauce. Very hot. Be careful. Yeah. Thank you, Jennifer. So all I'm going to do now for making my sauce is put a little white wine in this pan and some juniper berries. Yeah, which I've crushed. You must remember to crush them. Throw them in willy-nilly. Indeed. And I'm just going to put in my pureed pigeon livers. And stir that around. And some stock. Some good pigeon stock or other game stock. A bit of pepper and salt. Keep stirring it so that it dissolves and thickens. When you make game stock, do you have any feelings about mixing game? I mean, I ca in the old game I eat, I save the bones and I, I, I keep them in the deep freeze until I have enough to make a good stock. I yeah. don't mind if they're mixed. 
It's not at all. Now, I put a, a bag in the, in the freezer and just sort of add to it as I get carcasses and veins. And yes, things. it works. And to, to lift it at the end, just finish it off with a squeeze of lemon juice. Time for my hop and john to be mixed with my hop and rice. <laughs> hoppity hoppity hoo. Put that on there. Looks nice. Smells delicious. There's a nice sort of fragrance coming up. And we'll add the rice. This is ordinary long grain, but the patna. Not the arborea, not risotto rice. And then, I don't suppose they did it really in USA, but I'm going to put all that parsley on it. But that, I always like that look. It looks nice. Mm. There we are. There's my hoppin'. My hoppin' John is ready. Yes, so is my sauce. It'll go very well with the pidge pidge. Mmm, I yes, think. Yes, I think so. What a luscious landscape. Perfect for Welsh cows and Welsh butter. I've organised a little educational trip to the dairy. Here's the place! Marvellous to meet you, 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 from the butter we did before. Ah. Ah. And I watch after that culture better than the wife. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> right, we've got to pour it into this butter churn. Look how thick that is. Mm, oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Lovely. It looks always so beautiful. Mm. How can people resist it? Idiots. Right, let's get my homemade contraption. <laughs> I love it. Mm, <laughs> Your Heath Robinson. How long will this take? Go. It'll take about 20 minutes. Oh, my dear, you'll yeah. be exhausted. I feel you should be sitting down with it between your knees. They did, actually, yeah. in front of the fire in the old days. Mm. And you either sing lullabies or, just like my father, which had a great tenor voice, he used to sing, How is Gavretto? Is there any goats in the hills again? Can you dig it? Oi, scavretto, oi, se bigotro, ar creik ai coiron maer hen navren crudro. Gaver wen, 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 ie bin wen, bin wen, bin wen, bol, fan wen, bol, fan wen, a fresh wen, a cotton, wen, wen, wen. Right, ladies, which one of you would like to take a, a chance at this job? I'll have a go. But to take there it in are. turns. Yes, yeah. take it in turns. Or you'll get milk to an elbow. <laughs> Quite enough of that, dear. Right, I'll carry on. <laughs> Washed and salted. Let's give it a fair bit of bashing. Take another Scotch hand. It's great. Good old pedal. Scotch hand, did you call it? Yes. And here we go, ladies. And not a bad job on a Monday morning if you don't like somebody. You just only have to think about them and wham! <laughs> <laughs> you see the water bouncing yes, out? Yes, look at it coming out of it. Right. Who's the first one to volunteer for this job? I'll have a go. Look this. <laughs> Belt the life out of it. We might make a dairy made of you in the end. We reckon. <laughs> yes, well. Of course you can. <laughs> It'll take time. It's got that nice rugged look of the amateur. There we are, ladies. Your labour of love here today. A wonderful piece of butter. Thank you very much. Isn't that lovely? It looks like heaven. Wonderful. It was lovely to meet you. Thank you, it's been my privilege. Thank you Jochen Bauer. Ta-da, Ruanke Ta-da. Ta-da.
I'm going to make a Quercian apple cake. A what? A Quercian apple cake. What is it? Quercian. Quercy is the southern part of Perigord. Oh, really? I've never heard of it. Well, no, most people haven't, but I once spent um, a rather diverting part of my debauched existence down there. And here I've got some flour, and I'm just going to put in it some baking powder and mix that about. I'm just going to make a well in the middle of that. And into it I'm going to put two beaten eggs and some softened butter. And then, using my fingertips, I'm going to work all that in. And what I'm going to fill this cake with is sliced apples, eating apples, not cooking apples, because cooking apples, as we know, fall to pieces. Although it's a French cake, preferably not golden delicious. And um, I've left them macerating, that lovely word, macerating, overnight in rum and orange flower water and a bit of lemon rind. Very exotic, orange flower water. Mmm. My father used to use the aftershave. Yes, lovely smell. And here I've got seven fluid ounces of the liquid which I've strained off the apples. And I'm going to use this to help me make my pastry. And just keep working it and it will come together. It's very nice, Quercy. It's one of those sort of areas of Perigord. It's not as well known as the sort of main truffle area. And they have a lot of geese down there, so you get a lot of foie gras. They're good. And quite a few truffles. Just sort of keep playing with it. And eventually it will come good on you. I'm going to put that to rest. And this is what it looks like two hours later. Oh, it's turned into a nice bun. Yeah, it's become pliable and beautifully sort of workable and soft and silky and a bit like chamois leather. That's and amazing. Now, move all this out of the way. Because, for my next trick, I have this tablecloth. <laughs> Spread that out smoothly on the table. And I'm just going to flour it. Because you're going to do the next part of this on the cloth. I love this sort of nonsense. And for this bit only, I'm going to use a rolling pin. And don't, don't put a lot of weight on it. Just flatten it out a bit. Try and keep it into as even a shape as you can. And then you use your hands. And working from the middle, you just keep spreading it out very gently. One of the reasons Kirsian girls are in such demand as wives. And try not to let it go into holes, but if it does, it doesn't actually matter because you're going to roll it up. What you don't want it to do is um, sort of get too bunched up at the edges. Well, I'm going to be some time with this, so what are you up to? I'm going to do a dish of simple soused herrings. They're very good and, and rather forgotten fish. I mean, people go and buy this fish in cellophane in um, supermarkets when a good fresh herring is remarkably cheap and remarkably good for you. Much better than um, all these expensive fish, as a matter of fact, because it's one of the oily fishes, which is exceedingly good for your insides. Anyway, on with, with the herrings. What you do is, when you buy them, make sure that the eyes are nice and bright, because that means they're fresh. There's a nice little gleaming fish, you see. It's really quite simple. Don't be frightened of the bones, I'll show you. Cut the head and tail off. Now you would take out the the gut and then say E, I can't, you can. Mm -hmm. There you are. Now you want to get the backbone out. And that's very easy too. Turn the fish upside down on the board and press flat. Gently like that. As by magic, that will loosen the backbone. Look, you can help it with the back of the knife if you want. But you can just pick it out, you see, like a furry caterpillar. Mm. There it goes. Then just trim the sides off to make a dainty fish. Then run your fingers just to see if there are a few more bones left. 
But you see, it's, it's no big deal. It's easy. Do you see how beautiful that is? A lovely herring fillet. Cut it in half and pop them in this charming dish. Right, I'll just go and rinse my fingers before I start putting the spices on. A very good thing to have in the sink is half a lemon, because in case the telephone goes or, you know, you have to leave it with your, your fishy fingers, if you scrounge your fingers into the lemon, it'll take all the smell away and you'll be fresh and nice. Now, I have here pickling spice, and I shall sprinkle about a heaped tablespoon over the fillets. You can buy this already made up. But it's really a mixture of coriander, mustard seed, peppers, chilies, and spice. Couple of nice bay leaves. Pop them in. Onion rings. Place them nicely or haphazardly. Can't you be nice and haphazard? Story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Salt. Pepper. Then a mixture of half white wine and half some very good wine vinegar. I've got something very grand here. Vinaigre de vin blanc de la Champagne. How about that? Mm -hmm. About the same amount of white wine. I'm going to put it in a slow oven for about one and a half hours. Then you have to let it cool before you eat it. With a good dollop of sour cream, I like it. There we are. Now let's go on with your magic. That's wow. looking remarkable. It's like some wonderful old bit of parchment. Isn't it incredible? Yes. It just takes time and patience and application. It sort of wants to be as thin as cigarette paper. Good gracious. And paint this with melted butter. Just pretend you're Vincent van Gogh while you're painting it. And then I'm just going to sprinkle evenly across this the drained apples, which have been macerating, and spread them out. You don't want them piling up on top of one another. Keep them as flat as possible. It smells wonderful. I must say, it's quite a labour of love, isn't it? It is indeed, yes. Absolutely, but worth every mouthful. There we are. And you can, if you want, a bit tidy, sort of trim the edges. But, um, <coughs> who wants to be tidy? And then... Using the tablecloth as an aid, be gentle again, you know, slowly, slowly, there's no hurry. Slowly does it. You roll it up. Keep pulling the cloth towards you as you do it, so. This is wonderful. It looks like something made in the Grand Convent. <laughs> For high days and holidays. And be careful at this stage, you don't jerk your tablecloth too smartly so it rolls off the table the other end. It'll be heartbreaking. On and on, on and on, you're at the end. Right. And then you're going to roll it up very gently and carefully. Roll it round into a spiral. And then the next thing is to transfer it to a baking sheet. Tricky. That's yes, right, use the tablecloth. Brush it with beaten egg just to glaze it. It looks like a giant tortellini. I mean, it does a bit, yes. doesn't it? Yes. And then sprinkle it with a bit of caster sugar. And now I'm going to put this in a, in a fairly hot oven, sort of gas seven, for about 50, 55 minutes. Just keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't burn. And when it's all nice and brown and golden and whatever, eat it. Eat it! Bravo, Dad. Wonderful. Thank you. Tour de force, I call that. Magnificent. Just sit there and I'll give you a ride. So much Whee! easier than when I weighed nine stone, this isn't. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> was that good? <laughs> i tell you what I really like to do. I'm sure that could be possible. It's all right, Jennifer. I'm not <laughs> making indecent proposals to him. You never know with her. Never know. 
Left foot in, put your right foot over. Left foot in, put your right foot over. Is she like a chorus girl? Two, three, kick, kick. Oh, she had to go and lose that. The Asta wouldn't take her mother's good advice. No, it isn't as though every girl has got one. And she wouldn't let it go with any price. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we doing, Les? Well, we're called it legging. This is where they used to be years ago. And there's no such thing as engines and things. Ah. This is how we did it. And that's where the term come from, leg it. You couldn't take the horse through a tunnel, could Exactly. You? Exactly. They all oh. had to walk over the top and the boat had to be pushed through by legs. Like an old horse. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> must have built up their calf muscles beautifully. <laughs> the light! The light! We made it, Jennifer! All done! Almost there! All done! Just one last shove! Push on! Ah! Really? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Healthy herring steeped in spices. <laughs> a really good way to deal with a small bird. A meal in itself and pretty to boot. <laughs> Not an ordinary apple cake, it repays the gentle touch. Back to sandwiches tomorrow, don't you? Yeah, no. Back to reality. I can't remember last night. Well done, George. Cheers, George. Cheers, George. Well, here we are, the end of this little journey. And I used to be going home, yes. Ah, no more driving. It's so kind of Liz to give us a push. Hi, it? Liz. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Liz. This is great. This is the life. Wonderful. I mean, it's amazing. You know, Thomas Telford, who built all these waterways around here, he was an incredible man. He was completely illiterate, couldn't read or write, and he used to go to bed with a piece of string and tie knots in it until he got his problems solved. Well, I thought we were rather good with the butter. I thought we did it, rather well. It was great fun. Never done it before. No, never done it before. And never done um, legging before. No. It's one of those sort of things you can, you know, to Christmas party when they say, what do you think you've done that nobody else has done before? Legging! <laughs> <laughs> What a lovely view, isn't it? I'm going to make a a dish that was invented for the slaves, I suppose, in the Deep South. It's called Hopping John. One has to be very ashamed about it. In fact, I think my family on my mother's side had something to do with it. They were Bristol merchants, you know, and they dealt in rum and slaves, I have a horrible feeling. Rum, sodomy and the lash. Would it the Navy? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I've got this salt bacon, or salt pork, if you can get it. And I've just cut it up into little chunks. Like that. Then take it over to cook it. This is very hot, this auger. Mm. Beware. Now, I've got a little oil in the pan. Pop the bacon in. These need to fry a little bit, not too much, because we're going to do quite a lot of cooking with them. 
Oh, goodness, it doesn't matter how many times I do it. I just love that smell of frying bacon, don't you? It's wonderful, yeah. I think this was a great treat to have a bit of pork. I'm it sure is. they didn't give them much pork. Beastly so-called Christians treating people unbelievably badly. Now I'll add some onions. Great. We made it, Jennifer. All done. Almost there. All done. Just one last shove. Push on. Ah, really. <laughs> Healthy herring steeped in spices. <laughs> A really good way to deal with a small bird. Still, still off. Do that. Keep talking. A meal in itself and pretty to boot. <laughs> Not an ordinary apple cake. It repays the gentle touch. Back to sandwiches tomorrow, though, aren't you? Yeah, no. Back to reality. I can't remember last night. Well done, George. Cheers, George. Cheers, George. Well, here we are, the end of this little journey. And I used to be going home, yes. Ah, no more driving. It's so kind of Liz to give us a push. Hi, Liz. But now I'm going to put these pigeons in the oven and go over here and make my sauce. Very hot, be careful. Yeah, thank you, Jennifer. So all I'm going to do now for making my sauce is put a little white wine in this pan and some juniper berries, Never. which I've crushed. You must remember to crush them. Throw them in willy-nilly. Indeed. And I'm just going to put in my pureed pigeon livers and stir that around. And some stock, some good pigeon stock or other game stock, a bit of pepper and salt, keep stirring it so that it dissolves and thickens. When you make game stock, do you have any feelings about mixing game? I mean, I can't, in the old game I eat, I save the bones and I, I, keep, I keep them in the deep freeze until I have enough to make a good stock. I yeah. don't mind if they're mixed. Not at all. Now, I put a, a bag in the, in the freezer and just sort of add to it as I get carcasses and veins. And yes, it works. And to, to lift it at the end, just to finish it off, a squeeze of lemon juice. Time for my hop and john to be mixed with my hop and rice. <laughs> <laughs> hoppity, hoppity, who? Put that on there. Well, in the middle of that. And into it, I'm going to put two beaten eggs and some softened butter. And then, using my fingertips, I'm going to work all that in. And what I'm going to fill this cake with is sliced apples, eating apples, not cooking apples, because cooking apples, as we know, fall to pieces. Although it's a French cake, preferably not golden delicious. And um, I've left them macerating, that lovely word, macerating, overnight in rum and orange flower water, and a bit of lemon rind. Very exotic, orange flower water. Mmm. My father used to use the aftershave. Yes, lovely smell. And here I've got seven fluid ounces of the liquid, which I've strained off the apples. And I'm going to use this to help me make my pastry. And just keep working it, and it will come together. It's very nice, Quercy. It's one of those sort of... Areas of Perigord is not as well known as the sort of main truffle area. And they have a lot of geese down there, so you get a lot of foie gras. They're good. And quite a few truffles. Just sort of keep playing with it. And eventually it will come good on you. I'm going to put that to rest. And this is what it looks like two hours later. Help. 
It's rather always rather nice, nice here in our cloth cap out there, racing our pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> and a bit of butter within each cavity, just to keep them moist. My father, you know, used to have his pigeons flown from Cairo. Extraordinary. Particularly good pigeons from Cairo. Yes, they breed them specially for the table. There we are. And then, nice bit of streaky bacon over the top of them. Again, to make sure that they keep moist and lubricated. Yeah, and just tuck it down. And these will go in a hot oven, gas, seven or thereabouts, for 10 to 15 minutes, as long as you like them. But they must be pink, don't overcook them. No, they'll turn into leather, won't they? And a great treat here. These are actually pigeons' livers. They were delicious. Well, because they've been shot, you see, you get them with all the stuff inside them. Otherwise, if you can't get pigeons' livers, and you very often can't, then you can always use chicken livers. I'm just going to put them through a sieve. And all I've done with these livers is just saute them in a little bit of butter until they're barely cooked. And I'm going to use these to thicken my sauce. When your father's pigeons came from Cairo, mm -hmm. what did you do with them? Did well, you keep them somewhere? Well, they were dead. Oh, they were dead. <laughs> no, they arrived, did they, like the quail. Sir. And then, using my fingertips, I'm going to work all that in. And what I'm going to fill this cake with is sliced apples, eating apples, not cooking apples, because cooking apples, as we know, fall to pieces. Although it's a French cake, preferably not golden delicious. And um, I've left them macerating, that lovely word, macerating, overnight in rum and orange flower water and a bit of lemon rind. Very exotic, orange flower water. Mmm. My father used to use the aftershave. Yes, lovely smell. And here I've got seven fluid ounces of the liquid which I've strained off the apples. And I'm going to use this to help me make my pastry. And just keep working it and it will come together. It's very nice, Quercy. It's one of those sort of areas of Perigord. It's not as well known as the sort of main truffle area. And they have a lot of geese down there, so you get a lot of foie gras. They're good. And quite a few truffles. Just sort of keep playing with it. And eventually it will come good on you. I'm going to put that to rest. And this is what it looks like two hours later. Oh, it's turned into a nice bun. Yeah, it's become pliable and beautifully sort of workable and soft and silky. And Scotch hand? That's great. Good old pedal. Scotch hand, did you call Yes. And here we go, ladies. And not a bad job on a Monday morning if you don't like somebody. You just only have to think about them and wham! <laughs> <laughs> you see the water bouncing yes, out? Yes, look at it coming yeah. out of it. Right, who's the first one to volunteer for this job? I'll have a go. Look this. <laughs> Belt the life out of it. We might make a dairy made of you in the end. We reckon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, of course you can. <laughs> It'll take time. It's got that nice rugged look of the amateur. There we are, ladies. Your labour of love here today. A wonderful piece of butter. Thank you very much. Isn't that lovely? It looks like heaven. Wonderful. It was lovely to meet you. Thank you. It's been my privilege. Thank you. Jochen Bauer. Ta da, Ta da. Ta da. I'm going to make a Quercian apple cake. A what? A Quercian apple cake. What is it? Quercian. Quercy is the southern part of Perigord. Oh, really? I've never heard of it. Well, no, most people haven't, but I once spent um, a rather diverting part of my debauched existence down there. And here I've got... <laughs> Just sit there and I'll give you a ride. So much Whee! easier than when I weighed nine stone, this isn't. Well, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> was that good? <laughs> I tell you what I really like to do. A 
I'm sure that could be possible. It's all right, Jennifer. I'm not making indecent proposals to him. You never know with her. Never know. <laughs> Left foot in, put your right foot over. Left foot in, put your right foot over. She's like a chorus girl. Two, three, kick, kick. Oh, she had to go and lose that. The Asta wouldn't take her mother's good advice. No, it isn't as though every girl has got one. And she wouldn't let it go with any price. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we doing, Les? Well, we're called it legging. This is where they used to do it years ago, and there's no such thing as engines and things. Ah. This is how we did it, and that's where the term come from, leg it. You couldn't take the horse through a tunnel, could Exactly, you? exactly. They all oh. had to walk over the top, and the boat had to be pushed through by legs. Like an old horse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Must have built up their calf muscles beautifully. 